the client came to us with a very expensive brief. Six bedrooms, a gym, a study, a separate informal dining area and living area and, and as well as a formal living and dining area. 15,000 square feet plot situated almost like an island. So there is a main road on one side and there are three smaller roads on all other sides. So Lucknow city has been developing over the last two decades and the new area is Gomti Nagar. So this is one of the main arterial roads. On this side there is a hotel, there are other larger plots. This side, if you look, it's like a complete crisscross of smaller plots. All these are little, 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 little bungalows with a small road network going inside. There is a junction here. So the road basically goes like this. And our client picked up these four plots together, four small plots to make a slightly larger plot. So this is a road here, this is a road here. All these are small internal roads which are only nine meters wide leading to all these houses. Now, the starting point of this was that this road is actually on the south and this is the north. So one would have had more open space if you were to orient the house this way, towards the main road. But then at the same time, this is a high traffic road as well. And this side when you orient, there are a lot of small houses on all sides, so there's a house, 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 everywhere, surrounded by small houses. So he said, there are two ways to do this. You know, you basically need to somehow screen this whole space and then open up the house. So maybe the house takes the southern part of the plot and in the north you create a large garden. So this garden acts as a buffer between the bungalows on the other side. Also, all the main spaces are oriented towards this garden being in the northern side. So this is all done in response to two things. The temperature in Lucknow, which for six months is over 30 degrees Celsius. The other thing is the traffic on this road at all times. Very busy road. So for that reason, the entire house is actually like this. So now if I was to draw something which is a little more detailed, the house becomes this. In a sense, so it becomes like the courtyard house, which is prevalent in traditional Indian architecture. This is south, this is north. But then we made a variation because there are several of these houses. And the whole idea was that we did not want to make one large block. Because if you look at all of these, all these houses are half the size because the plots are one fourth the size. And this is four plots together. So one should not make something that is so large that it dwarfs all these other people on all these sides. So we then fragmented this. So this has become like a room. There's a room, there's a room. So there's a series of rooms and then they are all at different levels as well. And something here. So this becomes completely green, opening into large green here. And then there is a courtyard here, in the center of the house. So the house is a take on the traditional Indian courtyard, but it is totally different in the sense that the courtyard is here, and then by fingers it opens into the landscape space. And then the landscape space is large here. Now what you wanted to do is, like I said earlier, you need to fragment this house because otherwise it would have been too large. Imagine this on this scale would have been something like a huge block like this. So. There are a lot of variations done in this in terms of balcony spaces, outdoor spaces, indoor sheltered spaces on all sides of the house. And then this whole house is fragmented into a series of blocks like this. So you no longer perceive it as one big huge volume, you perceive it as a series of small volumes. So in doing so, you actually brought down the scale of the house in response to the surroundings. Then at the same time, what we've done is, you know when you think Lucknow, what do you think is tradition? Now in tradition in Lucknow, if one has been to the old part of Lucknow, there are lots of domes, arches, this kind of architecture. Now one can't make this 
because this is a totally different surrounding and this area is the new area of Lucknow and does not have any of these kind of structures. Because these kind of structures, let's not forget that the scale is totally different. To make a structure like this, you will need a plot 10 times the size of this. And then you have to have that height and that scale for every room to allow you to do a structure which is purely traditional. The one most common element in all these, this architecture which is traditional is the Jali screen which is used extensively everywhere in some form. Then simultaneously there is also Lucknow is very famous for the chicken work which is again ornamental and it's again a small pattern which is repeated. So these two elements, the chicken and the Lucknow traditional architecture has been conveyed by the use of screens which are created in GFRC and these screens do two things to the house again. So they get that element of the tradition inside, they get that little sense of ornamentation inside the house. At the same time, what it does is it screens the east, west and south from the huge amount of heat that is there because the sun is in this direction in the south in the summer. So there is a huge amount of heat reduction and in fact in this house when uh, we finished it two months ago in May which is one of the hottest months, if you walk into this house with no air conditioning on, the house is cool. So then you know you have achieved an energy efficient building. So one of the most interesting aspects of this house is the section. And actually a section is the most important drawing in architecture. So if you take a section through this house, it's not just a standard ground, you know, what you do is a ground floor and a first floor. This is a standard section. Here, there is a portion here. So you go to the mid landing of the steps, there is a room. At the ground floor, of course, there are rooms. So there is one room which is so high, which is the living room, which is two volumes. Simultaneously, on the side of it is a dining room, which is this high. When you take the flight of steps up, then there are rooms which do not sit on this, but they are adjacent, which are there. So there is that, there is that. This part is forming a terrace. So there's somebody here, somebody here. There's again a terrace here, there's somebody here. There's somebody here. In a sense, so what happens is, because of the multiple levels, it becomes a very interesting cross-section when you move through the house, through the various parts. Now this is the whole central courtyard, which is, for practical purposes, completely roofed. And then within this roof, there are skylights, as well as this which allows the hot air to go out. So you have air coming in naturally from different directions at different times of the year. All the hot air goes out from the top. So that makes this house very cool in the summer months. And at the same time, it gives you all these different experiences when you're moving through the house. In addition, let's look at, so this is the macro section. But if you start looking at minor spaces, so let's say this is now a blow up of this room. So that is the room. Then there is a balcony space here. This balcony space has a screen wall plus a screen roof. So you have a completely enclosed space from which you move out to a semi-enclosed space and then from which finally on some sides you move out to garden spaces which are on the outside. Then there are places where just to shelter the internal space from the exterior, the heat, there are screens at just this 1.2 meters. So you're here and this part is has a lot of plants. So first whatever sun you're getting here 100 percent gets reduced by 20% already. Then because of all these plants, it gets reduced another 10-15%. So by the time it's inside, so it makes a huge amount of difference in the cooling required for this room. It's a series of rooms and everywhere 
that are open spaces. Basically, the interiors of the house was determined by the architecture of the house. The way the spaces were created in the house, the play of light and shadow through these jali structures, that is what determined the interior of the house. The entire structure was a concrete structure that helped us determine the material of the house by using, because the walls were seamlessly concrete everywhere, we used a flooring palette which was a grey Italian marble to give a complete flow in the house of one material, one wood colour. So the idea is to create these spaces which are seamless, the materials are seamless, so a person does not focus on the interior but focuses on the spaces created. And light and shadow played a huge role in the determining the interior. Where there was a beautiful quality of light, we have made sure we have highlighted those areas. The interior is kept very raw, basic, yet plush, easier for the client to live in. The colour element was added only by art and by carpets, so that it doesn't overrule the concrete of the structure or the chali structure at all.